the latest chapter of China's evolving relationship with its territory of Hong Kong, a proposed amendment on handing over fugitives has stirred concerns in Hong Kong. But are those worries warranted? And from Washington, while the U.S. presses China to further ease the state's role in its economy, American critics accuse President Trump of also breaching free market principles. What's behind his growing interventions in the U.S. economy? Welcome to The Point, an opinion show coming to you from Beijing. I'm Li Xin. One overseas murder, but four jurisdictions and the demand for justice has exposed the complex relations and legal loopholes between the Chinese mainland, Hong Kong and Taiwan. Early last year, a Hong Kong woman was gruesomely killed, allegedly by her boyfriend, during their holiday in Taiwan. The suspect fled back to Hong Kong and has remained in custody. Authorities in Taiwan have been calling for Hong Kong to hand him over, but therein lies the problem. Hong Kong has laws concerning the surrender of fugitives with numerous countries. However, in the two decades since Hong Kong has returned to Chinese rule, the territory has never ironed out its law governing what to do with fugitives involving other parts of China, such as the mainland, Macau and Taiwan. Taiwan, though, sees itself as a self-rule. Beijing considers it an integral part of China. There was never a test case for such a law until now. But the Hong Kong SAR government's proposed amendments to close these loopholes has sparked other concerns on the ground, such as that a new law could be abused for political purposes. Why is the situation so complex? Can this legal puzzle be solved? Are the concerns valid about the potential for abuse? Joining me in the discussion from Hong Kong are Chelsea Wai, a senior lecturer at Hong Kong Baptist University, Robert Kep, a director from the Economist Corporate Network, and in our Beijing studio, Dr. Zhong Ho Tao, a researcher at the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences. Gentlemen, welcome to The Point. Chelsea Wai, let me go to you first. So in the beginning of my leading, I said one overseas murder, but four jurisdictions help uh, and how viewers understand exactly why we're talking about four jurisdictions uh, here. I'm talking about Hong Kong and uh, Macau and Taiwan, of course, and the Chinese mainland. I think the problem is with Hong Kong's special status. Hong Kong is part of China, but Hong Kong has a very high degree of autonomy. Hong Kong can draw its own conclusions, can make deals, can make treaties with other jurisdictions and other countries and regions. So Hong Kong has its own rule of law system. And in this regard, Hong Kong doesn't have any this kind of uh, extradition treaties or agreement with uh, the other three jurisdictions. So this time when the case came up, the Hong Kong government wanted to uh, push these new changes in the regulations in order to uh, facilitate future cases. Uh, some of the people who opposed to this change is thinking that these changes could be too broad because they could imply that in the future some of the Hong Kong residents who have been accused by other jurisdictions could be wrongly accused or even be extradited to other jurisdictions without the same protection as in Hong Kong because Hong Kong has a very high degree of protection of citizens. They, uh, mm -hmm. If you are not convicted, you can be uh, released on bail. And in other places, it may be uh, possible and sometimes on certain circumstances, it is not possible. So people fear about this. Mm -hmm. That is why some people fear that this okay. can be abused and the people would be put in jeopardy. Let's get the terminology right. I mean, um, just now you also used the word extradition. We also see this word extradition on many Western newspaper or, or reports headlines and yet uh, what the Hong Kong SAR government has used actually is not this word but rather the uh, surrender of uh, fugitive offenders or transfer of uh, fugitives. Um, I want to understand that extradition applies to uh, conditions within, uh, between different countries internationally, whereas a surrender of the fugitives uh, does not have that kind of a sovereign threshold. Dr. Zhong, uh, help us understand that aspect of the entire story uh, and why it is important that we make this distinction. 
uh, since both Hong Kong and Taiwan is a part of China, they are not a, a, a country. They are not countries, so the word extradition could not be used or could not be uh, practiced in this situation. They could only be used just as you say. It could be used as transfer, or so fugitive offenders, or some other terminology. Hmm. Well, a commentary published uh, by China Daily uh, in the last in last month said that uh, since there is no rendition agreements between the four jurisdictions in China at this moment, each could become a fugitive haven. Rob, let me go to you. What do you think of his uh, judgment there? Um, what could be the consequence, the real consequence of, of these different jurisdictions within China not having any agreement on such mutual uh, judicial assistance? Well, that certainly is an issue. That's exactly why this uh, case that you mentioned of the uh, murder in, in Taiwan and the suspect now being able to reside in Hong Kong and not have to worry about uh, rendition or extradition, depending on what terms you want to use in that case. But in any case, that, uh, that has brought it to light. So you, you could, in fact, hide out. Uh, there's also uh, cases of, uh, for example, Macau tycoons uh, being accused and then coming as close by as Hong Kong, basically next door, and being able to hide out in Hong Kong without concerns for being uh, rendered back to Macau. So it does happen, but I think the bigger question is how big an issue is that versus the broader concern that was being mentioned by the professor that you don't have the same rule of law, you don't have the same transparency. So there's a b deeper, more fundamental question on jurisprudence and how much faith people put in the laws of these other territories that their rights here, for example, in Hong Kong would be equally protected. And there's a lot of skepticism about that. Hmm. Um, Rob, let me stay with you. How have such cases been hem handled in the past? We know that there are, uh, agree there are legal provisions on mutual uh, legal assistance between Hong Kong and other parts of China, and yet it has been deemed um, not practicable or unenforceable. Exactly what was the pro problem with the existing law and why the uh, amendments have to be made and in what regards? Well, I'm not a legal scholar, but given uh, the basic uh, reporting that's gone on and what's perceived, I, I could say, in the business community, is that it's been very ad hoc, right? So you've had a case like Xiao Zhenhua and the publishers here in, in Hong Kong who uh, published books that the mainland authorities didn't like, and these people were just taken. They were just, they disappeared from Hong Kong and then reappeared in the mainland. So uh, that's kind of how it's been handled in the past, but otherwise people didn't really cross a line in the mainland felt pretty protected. And I think because everyone liked that system, it hasn't been pushed. But indeed, we've had the case of this particular murder uh, where it's been brought to light and it shows a glaring loophole and so there's been this discussion on how to address that. But I think the reason it hasn't been addressed, addressed in the past is one, you have different systems and two, I even though it wasn't a perfect solution, the general status quo was acceptable as applies to a lot of the four territories. Well, on the other hand, Hong Kong is part of China, just as uh, Macau and, and uh, Taiwan, uh, whatever they declare themselves or whatever some people in those regions uh, might think. And if you belong to one China, there needs to be a certain unity in terms of uh, judicial uh, jurisprudence or um, when, when a crime is punishable, it needs to be punished. Uh, justice needs to be served. So, Chong Se Wai, how do you look at the, the necessity as well for uh, no loopholes are left in any jurisdiction within one country so that justice can be served whether it can, it's a smaller case or whether it's a bigger case. For this girl who is 20 year old who was pregnant who was allegedly killed by a boyfriend, her case is no small case. Uh, a, a life is lost too, by the way. Yes, I think you are right. Uh, there should be a way to ease all these difficulties and to get justice done and to get the uh, fugitives or criminals or suspects being convicted and by the law. So this is something we need to be uh, very careful when pushing forward towards these goals. There are difficulties and there are also sentiments. I think the problems in Hong Kong now is about the sentiment because the people are suspicious of certain rules of 
uh, in the mainland uh, or certain rules in Hong Kong which uh, give different guarantees to personal liberty, to personal communication and all these things. So uh, even if I'm not sure uh, how this law would be changed and how these regulations would pass the legislature, uh, at any rate, even if this is passed, there will be a long time for this kind of legislature to be tested. When we have a next case or anything like that or uh, similar cases, criminal cases, then people will see how these cases have been handled, how the mainland judicial system uh, carried out the law in letter and in spirit. And if we prove that the mainland can provide all these protections and do these things in the accordance with the law and uh, give similar or not exact but similar treatment towards the uh, people involved, then people will gradually become aware that this is a good way to go forward. Without that kind of proof, people will still be very suspicious or skeptical about whatever the government claims mm -hmm. because people have been told about all this. Now they want to see how this could proceed. Right. Well, I wanted to see, I wanted to say after uh, Rob's question, uh, answer to a previous question, a lot of this is about perception of legal protection on the Chinese mainland. Um, in, in, in 1997 or prior to 1997, before that territory returns to Chinese rule, there were a lot of fear about the difference, the, the gaps in legal protection level uh, between the two sides. So uh, some people are saying this is a loophole, other people are saying this is a, a designed um, outcome, not a loophole that the two sides do not have this kind of surrender, surrendering mechanism in terms of uh, fugitive offenders. Uh, Dr. Jung, what is the picture? What is, the, what is really going on in terms of legal protection on the Chinese mainland? Are the perception of, uh, of this matter in the minds of a lot of people in Hong Kong who are critical of the mainland reflecting the reality? Actually, the Chinese mainland has improved in its legal construction and its legal system. In the past uh, 70 years, the Chinese mainland has enacted more than 100,000 uh, acts and regulations, and uh, they have implemented in almost every area in our society, and even for the cross-strait relations, we have enacted uh, uh, cross-strait joint uh, crime funding and mutual uh, uh, judicial assistance uh, Agreement. Uh, so I think the Chinese mainland has indeed improved. We are, we should be optimistic about our future. And those uh, in Hong Kong and in Taiwan who just want to blame Chinese mainland, I think for them they just want to offend the Chinese mainland. They just do uh, everything in uh, deconstructive, deconstructive, but nothing in constructive. Hmm. What is the complexity involving Taiwan here? As for Taiwan, I think they are in dilemma. For the one hand, they want to say a good relationship is uh, un uh, uh, actually, uh, especially in the uh, judicial cooperation with the Chinese mainland. On the other hand, they just want to maintain their autonomy. So now they're just in a dilemma situation. All right, we're going to leave it there. A complex issue, but time is really limited. Many thanks to my guests, Cheong Siu Wai, a senior lecturer at Hong Kong Baptist University, Robert Kev, director from The Economist a Corporate Network, and Dr. Zhong Hotel, a researcher at the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences.